Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be sex, sexual anticipation, and satisfaction. Well, I've actually got an email today from a woman, and she describes she's in college, and she describes what's going on between her and a guy that she's interested in. And what I like about the email is you can see the effect that he's having on her by taking his time, being mysterious, and she's thinking about this guy all the time. And you'll notice as they've been interacting with one another, things have been escalating between the two of them sexually to the point where she's just literally ready to explode and have sex with him. Even though they haven't gone all the way yet, they've definitely fooled around and he's gotten her off. But she's sitting around wondering, what's he, what's he doing? When am I going to hear from him next? And so you get a great perspective on what women go through when guys do a good job of creating that sexual tension, that sexual anticipation. And she's pretty much at the point where she's just ready to let this guy have his way with her. But she wants to go know how to go about letting him know so he does something about it. So I got a quote that I wrote in this particular topic and then we're going to go through her email. And the quote says, we tend to value more what we have to work for and often take for granted things that come too easy. Learning to cultivate and practice infinite patience and a non-attached attitude to the things, circumstances, and people that we want and desire in life is essential to helping us remain centered and at choice. In order to consistently get what we want in life, we must remain in control of our emotions and desires instead of letting them control and hijack us. When our emotions and desires control us, this puts us into a fearful state that causes our actions to take us away from what we want instead of towards what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump right in and go through her email. And she says, hey, Corey, I know you help you're paying clients first and you mostly deal with guys, but I'm really hoping you will have mercy on me. I'm an 18-year-old college freshman and I need major help with this weird situation with a guy back at school. I actually Googled how to get the alpha male and one of your videos came up titled How to Become an Alpha Male. So I have been binge watching your videos for the past two days. Anyway, here's the situation. I started school at the end of August and met a bunch of people from my same dorm. There was a guy that I liked immediately and of course, so did everyone else. So there's competition. You probably heard me say this in the past, I even talk about it in, in my book, is that when there's a guy who's popular with women, a guy who's successful, who's the alpha, it's like women are very competitive and they all, I've, I've had women that I've dated in the past and they got involved with one woman's who was a friend of theirs supposedly with their guy. They were all like trying to steal each other's guy. And it's just like when a guy is perceived to be rare and a catch and the kind of guy that everybody wants, it's like women will ruin their, their friendships with their best friend and step all over each other to get the guy that they want. And obviously she's having this kind of experience with some of the women that are there. And that's why it's so important, especially you take the perspective, obviously in this particular case, I'm talking directly to a woman who's asked me for help. And so in this particular case, this guy's got all kinds of women basically wanting to be with him and going out of their way to pursue this guy. But the one who expresses their interest but also is not coming unglued, seemingly have an indifferent approach. In other words, the one that he has to work the hardest for is the one he's going to value the most. That's just human nature. When something comes really easy, we don't, we don't respect it. Or we don't appreciate it. And that's why they say it's like you don't know what you got till it's gone kind of thing. She says he's the center of attention for our whole group, maybe even the whole freshman class. He's one of those guys who just naturally commands attention and doesn't give a shit, which is so sexy. I talk about this all the time. And here you have a woman's perspective talking about exactly how a man who has his shit together, who's indifferent, who does what he wants – and what makes him happy and how that attracts a woman to him. He's super hot and very flirty, always joking around with all the girls. Well, a man who loves women is loved by women. That's something that I learned from Zan. It's so true though. You know, I know I did a I posted a video last week 
and it got a lot of likes. I mean, it did really well compared to the average videos that I do, and it was from a woman. And it's like, I couldn't believe all the fucking hating that some of these guys, I blocked probably a dozen different guys. They were just being fucking assholes. I get guys that send me emails, they're like, why are you answering emails for women? It's like, they have the attitude of like, they're the enemy or something. Like, you're supposed to be our guy, you're supposed to be in our corner, not helping out women. I was like, well, 10% of my clients are women. That's the way it is. And I'm a coach. I, I want to teach people who want to learn and understand human behavior, not only about relationships, but also about being successful in life. And my goal, my mission is I, I want the stuff that I teach, I want every man, woman, every man and woman on the planet to know this stuff. I want it to be common knowledge someday because it'll, it'll make a much better society and men and women both will be a hell of a lot happier if they have a better understanding of one another and they don't put themselves in positions where they can be taken advantage of. But it's irritating to me as a coach, you get guys learn a little bit, they get laid a couple times and then a woman shows up commenting on a YouTube video or I do an email, answer an email from a woman, all the hateful comments that guys post. It's like, it's like a woman shows up and it's like, oh, now I can give back and all the girls that dick me over by being a fucking total prick to this one particular woman. It's it's just I want to create a community of people who are nurturing, who are loving, who are supportive of one another, who are not looking at it as like it's a battle of the sexes or a woman shows up and a bunch of guys pile on. It's like – and they wonder why they struggle with women. It's like one woman shows up or I read an email and they're being total fucking dickheads and they wonder why women don't like them or want to be around them. It's like come on, man. Shit. She says – but I noticed that he seemed to be the most flirtatious with me. He's always finding reasons to touch me, tease me, or make fun of me in a joking way like you talk about in your videos. You're a pretty smart woman. Over the past month, we have gotten really close and actually became friends. But also the sexual tension keep escalating to the point where if we were anywhere near each other, we would be tickling each other or touching or giving each other massages, etc. Well, it's obvious that the two of you like each other. And notice how this has been going on for a month. It's like slowly coming together, slow anticipation, slowly building, slowly escalating. It's like you're allowing it to happen and that's where you're, you're obviously exhibiting self-control because if this guy has pretty much – he can have any of the women that he wants at school. All the girls are, that you go to school with are throwing themselves at this guy and you're sp hanging back. It's obvious he's more into you than the rest of them. <clears throat> he would make sexual comments to me all the time, sometimes super dirty. Notice what she says. Sometimes super dirty but with just enough playful vibe to get away with it. So I talk about 90% charming James Bond, 10% naughty boy. And this guy obviously is doing a beautiful job of walking that line of being a little bit of a pervert but also being a total gentleman. Pervert to the point where – uh, the, the women will let him get away with it, which obviously she does because he's not a dick. He's not a creep about it. He has the right balance of charm and humor, playfulness, sexual dominance and going for what he wants without apologizing for his sexuality, which made me so into him. Once he was tickling me and I was laughing and I said something about how sensitive I am to being tickled. He looked me up and down and then looked me straight in the eyes and said, you're sexy as hell. You know that? You'd be a good fuck. That's when you say, really? How about you? Are you saying you're good and bad? Of course. Really? Prove it to me then. Say something cocky like that back. I was blown away when he said that. I'm just not used to guys being so confident and forward. It's like I talk about all the time. You see a woman, go up and tell her exactly what you like about her. But it's got to be authentic. You can't go, oh, you're really pretty. You got pretty eyes. If you feel it, you say, God, you got a fucking unbelievable body. Oh, it's like when you're congruent with this statement, you're like, oh. And look what this guy said. You're sexy as hell. You know that? You'd be a good fuck. Most guys cannot get away with that. But when, this, when you exhibit the behaviors that this guy is, he can say it. And, she's, and she'll feel attraction for you. It's more of an art than it is a science. She says, I think I've, 
I think I come off seeming really sweet and innocent and most guys think I want a sappy romance story, which actually turns me off. He's just so hot and I love the way he talks to me and flirts so effortlessly. Well, he pretty much has his choice with women. So if he's got his choice and he can pretty much have whoever he wants, he wants the girl he's going to have to work a little harder for, the one that's not so eager to throw themselves at him. In other words, if you come from a place that, hey, I'm the fucking hottest girl on campus, if you have that attitude, not that you're arrogant about it, but that you know you're valuable and that you have a catch and if he crosses the line, you're going to call him out on it, he'll respect you more. She says, two days ago, Sunday night, I was watching a movie in my dorm room with a bunch of friends and he came in with his roommate and they stayed to watch the movie. I was laying in my bed and he climbed into my bed with me and we were snuggling under the covers, which we've done before so it wasn't weird. But notice this time around, things are a little different. They escalated sexually. He was laying on his back with his back to me, so I was spooning with him. I was on the inside in between him and the wall. And after a few minutes, he reached in between us without even turning around so no one knew what was happening. He undid my jeans and slipped his hand inside my panties. And she says, holy shit, no one in big letters has ever done done something so bold like that to me before and I was so into it. This has been developing over the course of a month. Because when he's away from you, he's thinking about you as well because all these other girls are wanting to sleep with him and you're letting him come to you because you're around each other all the time. You're not resisting him, but you're not going out of your way to chase him. You're letting him come to you and therefore his attraction level is growing slowly as well. He got me off so fast and in a room full of people, I was biting his shirt and trying not to make noise. It was so good. She puts in big letters. And it was so good because she was so wound up already. She had been thinking about it for days and weeks. And then it finally escalated. But when the movie was over, he just acted like nothing happened. He winked at me. It was the same as always. In other words, he's like, it's a little secret between the two of you. And he's not going out and bragging about this shit to all of his friends. That's another guy who gets it. Women like a guy who can keep his mouth shut. He was the same as always, flirty and touchy and everything, but he didn't say anything about what happened. Yeah, it's like your little secret. So now I'm freaking out. I didn't see him at all yesterday because we have opposite schedules. And then when I saw him today, we were in a big group of people and we both have roommates, so we're never really alone. And also neither one of us said anything to any of our friends about what happened on Saturday night or Sunday night. We don't really text except to say, come hang out. If something is going on, we mostly just hang out in person since we live in the same dorm. My question is, what do I do? I know it's driving you crazy, but don't do anything. Let him be a little bolder next time because you notice over the course of a month, he's choosing you over these other women because you're not all over. I know you're like going bananas inside, but you're doing a beautiful job of exercising and maintaining your self-control. If you have the attitude... Of course he's going to want me. There's no rush. There's no reason to freak out about it. At the end of the day, he's the one who had his hand on your pants and not anybody else in the room. She says, I want to hook up with him so badly, but I have no idea what he's thinking or what he wants. It's a scientific fact that women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. Case in point. Let me read that statement again. I want to hook up with him so badly, but I have no idea what he's thinking or what he wants. He'll make up his own mind in time. Don't push him. Don't try to force it. Don't get angry. Just have a smile on your face and continue doing what you're doing. Does he not want anyone to know about what happened because he's not into me? Honey, he wouldn't have done that if he wasn't into you and the plus the fact he told you that you're sexy as hell what makes you so sexy and appealing to him is that you have emotional self-control i think you're doing fucking beautiful or is he just being a decent guy and not telling the whole world well the fact that he's not telling the whole world that's a good thing that means that you got a guy who's not gonna go hey i fucking banged that girl the other night because i mean bottom line is when most most people go off to college 
They're just trying to get laid and then want to go tell all their buddies about it because they don't know any better. This guy probably came from a good family. Mom and dad loved him. So he's comfortable. He's confident. He's got a good healthy self-esteem. And he saw a good healthy marriage or relationship from his parents growing up. So he knows what it looks like and he knows what it feels like. So he's in no rush and you shouldn't be either. Does he want it to happen again? Maybe, maybe not. It doesn't really matter. It's your little secret. I would be totally fine with just hooking up and not dating, but I don't want to be needy or anything. I know you say the girl ends up chasing the guy if the guy does things right, but I don't want to be desperate, especially when so many other girls are into him. Well, let him continue doing what he's doing. Obviously, you're texting him and you're reaching out from time to time. Just keep it at the same level. Because if you look, if you take a step back, I know your emotions are going bananas, but if you take a step back and look at the whole time you've been interacting with this guy, things have slowly escalated to the point where he got you off. He fingered you. He had his hands inside you. Maybe next time you'll be giving him a blowjob. Maybe next time you'll be alone together. Maybe next time you'll have sex. Maybe a month from now the sex will finally happen. Don't be in a rush. She says, help, I'm a mess. I can't think about anything else but him. I have no one else to talk to about this because my school is super religious and I don't want anyone thinking I'm a whore because of this. Well, I went to a Catholic high school, so I know where you're coming from. But at the end of the day, when people aren't around, everybody's hooking up. Corey, please help me get inside this guy's head and tell me what I should do next. I want him so much and I don't want to mess this up. Thank you for your help. You're so awesome and you really do get what makes a girl attracted to a guy. Thank you a million times. Honey, you're doing fucking outstanding. You're doing fantastic. Keep going at the pace that you're going. However much you're reaching out to him, keep it at that same level. There's no need to do any more than you're doing because things are – like I said, if you take a step back and you look at things as a whole, he's slowly gravitating towards you. And while he's away from you and he's got all these women that are basically saying, fuck me, fuck me. And he hasn't heard from you. He's wondering about you too. He's thinking about you too. His feelings are developing as well. How do I know? Look at how he's interacting with you. Look at how thing, Look at the type of things that he's saying towards you. Look how he's escalated things playfully under the sheets with all those people in the room. That's pretty hot. That's the kind of memory you're going to have for the rest of your life. Even if it doesn't work out. Even if you don't sleep with him. Even if it never goes anywhere. What a wonderful experience that was. You have an experience with a guy who gets what he's doing. That is so rare. That's a gift. That's a treasure. You should appreciate that. It doesn't matter whether you end up hooking up with them or dating them or sleeping with them or whatever. That's the kind of guy that you want to be involved with. He's patient. He takes his time. That's what you're looking for. So keep doing what you're doing. You're doing fucking great. I know it's driving you bananas. But I would say if you just keep doing what you're doing, eventually you're going to hook up. You're going to have sex. You're going to start dating. You're going to spend more and more time together. Just let it happen. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session with yours truly. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.